Yes. Okay, here we go. Looks like we're recording. Okay, so it's recording on Skype, and we're about to record on... Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, we are back. So I'm Elvin What's up? What's up? What's up, Elvin I'm Mike C. I'm Mike yep. C. How's everybody doing? We are we are here from Inner Cosmetics. Excited to be here on a Friday. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Mike had the uh, really good topic for us today. Something we can always live by over and over again. Yes, yes, yes. And that topic, boom, psh, is... Oh, our effects. <laughs> <laughs> I just made Go it. Go for it, Mike. Oh, I'm All sorry. Right. My bad. <laughs> Go for it. The topic of, of today is really fun, is why when you giving in, what well, giving in doesn't mean that you're giving up. Mm-hmm. Giving in doesn't mean you're giving up on something. It's like you're on a pulpit with like... And the message for today, oh, yeah. but honestly, <laughs> I know, doesn't it remind you of that, right? <laughs> it does, it does. But to go into it, oh, what does that mean to you? Tell me what that means to you. Giving in doesn't mean that you're giving up on something. So it's actually something that I constantly remind myself of. So before, I would stay up till four o'clock in the morning. I would mm-hmm. literally tell myself like to accomplish a goal I set forth. And I would be like, you know what? I'm not giving up on this. I want to see it through. What it looked like is me looking tired, haggard, having short tempers with the children. But <laughs> guess what? I did it, right? And so yes. to me, it wasn't that rewarding because here I am holding this product, but I'm so depleted in the process. And I'm like, you got, there has to be an easier way. And yeah. so I. I started taking notice that when I surrendered and said, and the reason I surrendered was because it was outside of my control. But when I let go, that's when it all came in. Right, right, right. right. And I'm like, like wait a minute. Yeah, so that's, what, yeah. that's why it's so profound for me. How about I think yourself? you hit the nail on the head with that, Ellie. You really mm-hmm. did. Um, I just think we're so used to grinding the stuff. We talked before about the suffer story, how, you know, I got to go ahead and just grind it out. But the big thing why we do anything is to be happy. And we somewhere along the lines that got lost. And why are you grinding so hard so I can get this and get that? And I, and when you give in, what it, I learned it means for me is you're giving in to the bigger version of you, the unseen version of you that exists. So it's been proven, I love using science, that co- inner cosmetics, is what we like to use is, the bigger part of you is unseen. Literally 99% of the, what makes you is unseen. The little mm-hmm. piece that we call, we identify as Mike C or as L. Vene, is the mm-hmm. smallest version of us. So we're we're locked into this physical presence and we're grinding hard and you're and, and you say I'm not giving up, but if you were to take the alternative path and say and trust something different and go, okay, what I'm going to try something different that's going to go against all my habits. I'm going to actually give in to struggle. I'm going to give in to grinding hard, no sleep, staying up late. Um mm-hmm mental anguish and i'm going to trust that it's already done Mm. and that the most the most beneficial the most beautiful path is going to unveil naturally to me Mm. i like that because when you initially hear that you want to against go against what you've been taught because you have people that are on stage and that are showing you and telling you you know got to fight hard you got to struggle for this and they're they're sharing their stories of struggle. And so we take that, but we're at different paradigms there. And what you spoke about before on yesterday, on Tuesday's episode. Yeah. Their struggle is their fun and their playtime. But when it yeah. comes, to, it's filtered down to us and we take it in a literal sense, meaning yeah. that we have to feel this uh, conflict within ourselves. Right. And that gives us that validation for reaching that goal. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I, I think, speaking of that, one of the people I love listening to is so funny is David Goggins. He's the ex-Navy mm-hmm. SEAL. He's a big on YouTube. And his thing is, he will get up in the morning, no shirt on, run outside in 10-degree weather for 20 miles. He'll dig a hole in the ice. You gotta suck. But what people don't understand is he has fun. He's yeah. having fun. He's having a it, great it, time. It, it, yes, he is. And to anybody's just like, shit, that's not fun. I right. know me. If I'm out there and I'm running in, follow me because something went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we're defining things by visuals. We are taking it a visual of what we see and we are twisting the meaning of it because we are making it it's just false. It's a false pretense. Yes. Right? And so, yes, I agree so much. And it's going to feel a little icky, a little weird at first. But before you knock it, we're here to give you homework assignments and practical yeah. application of things is try it. Explore it. It's going to feel weird, right? Yes, absolutely. Initially. Absolutely. I mean, look at from what we come from, as everybody knows, I'm a retired Secret Service. And one of the cool things about it was... I actually didn't struggle. I actually, I got denied before, actually. Um, lost oh, really? Whoever is. Yeah, it was like denied. And I just like, oh, well, I want it. And I just knew I wanted it. I didn't harp on it. And they called me back up and said, hey, would you still like to try out for it? Oh, you mean when you were applying to become when I was a applying for the Secret Service, yeah. Ah, yeah. okay. I didn't and know that. So, yeah, and so, you know, it was a class of 10,000 people that applied for my particular class, and out of them, they weaned it out to, like, 24 people, and I was one of 24. Now, most people are going to look at it as luck. That's not luck. That's me knowing what I want. The and letting go. Mind, and then I let it go. I didn't give up. I gave in. If you look at the odds, 10,000 people. Um, mm-hmm. In my class, I was the only one without a bachelor's degree, without a college degree or anything, only a high oh, school wow. diploma. Every person in my class had some kind of college accolades or some kind of crazy, even doctor degrees and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I was literally the only person there that never went to college, never went to college, was only in high school. And it was because, A, I was glad I wasn't aware of those odds because then your human mind was to say, listen, you're the only one out of 10,000 people (laughs) to want to go. And then you're playing everybody else is that. But I didn't even know it, which the universe helped me by not even knowing that. Until I went to class, it's like, wow, this is so cool how it works. I love it. I love and here it. I am training and doing things that, and for me, I had fun then. And you know how I am, Ellie. Just let it flow. Let it go. Let it flow. Let it flow. And one mantra we've been throwing around lately is awareness is the new yoga. Because now when we reflect back, we can see that all those moments that we surrendered, we surrendered. Because what it ultimately is, us trying to take control of the situation. Because we had a preconceived notion, a preconceived visual Mm -hmm. of how we're going to reach this goal. And when it starts not appearing in the manner we predetermined it to appear, we get, ah, our emotions kick in. Yes, high gear. High gear, but guess what? Listen. Spirit does not know the way. I'm sorry, human. The human side does yes, not know human, the human way. Donor. Right, you'll never you figure it out. There. You'll never figure it out. You will never, never figure it out. <laughs> yeah, never, ever, ever. You will never figure the middle road. All you need to do is stay focused on the end, like Neville Goddard always says. And for people who don't know Neville Goddard, look him up because you need to know who that man is. Mm-hmm. But um. I'm actually Living in the end. here for people who are on the on the chat so they can actually get these tools to never got her. That's a good one. Never got her. Yes. Living in the end. And that is all about staying focused on you. It's like it's like a movie, you know. But what's funny is when you watch a movie, and let's say it's the greatest movie ever and it got great and it has really, really great reviews. The funny thing is the movie in the end is only good as the middle part. So learn to enjoy the middle part. Because if I went and got, went to your favorite movie and said, this is the number one rated movie out in the, this year. It's been the best. And I go straight to the end. People are like, whoa, 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 whoa. I want to see mm-hmm. the middle. Wait, what? You want to see the middle? 
But don't you just want the end? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what? what? You, you're so funny. Oh, my God. So I'm in the middle of watching Ozark. So I share an Love account with our brother, Jeffrey, right? I oh, think. My... Oh, Jeffrey. Yes. I'm all in. I'm excited. Eating my popcorn. I got up this morning, watched, getting ready to watch some more. Yes. It was like the end. You know, it trailed off. And you know how they yeah, show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I was like, wait. How am I finished? What? The entire time I jumped in to season two, skipped all of oh, the. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so, yes, I actually did it. I skipped that. everything. I was like, oh, no. It's not. <laughs> I need that middle part. I, <laughs> I need, need that middle. middle. <laughs> so, yes, it literally just happened this morning. Absolutely. That. Is Middle so, is and now I had no idea. I had no idea that happened. So this <laughs> is once again the universe using this to show. Don't get too upset with the middle part that you're experiencing because that makes the end so much better. It, but so when you're always saying, "I just want, I just want the end," actually, just what you just said. I couldn't have asked for a perfect example. <laughs> I know it thing. literally just happened, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I am so watching season <laughs> one. I'm excited." What happened to get here, right? Yes. And that's how it is in life. What happened? That's the meat. You're in the middle of it. And I'm a new it. shot. Good stuff. Yes. 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 No, it's out. I love Take that. them bills and burn them. Put them on fire. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. And that's oftentimes awesome. we feel that um, we're so futuristic. We can get lost in the present. We can get lost in the present as well. So Absolutely. we're here to... Help you guys recognize you've arrived. You've already arrived. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, Ellie, speaking of that, I heard something that was really cool. I'm trying to remember the person that said it. But they said faith, the word faith was around long before the religion ever came about. Huh. So the word faith was adopted or grabbed or pulled into the religion. But faith's actual meaning is what made this world what it is. It was all imagination first. Another word for imagination is faith, for the unseen. Somewhere along the line, because faith is so powerful, people of religion decided to make it a religious term, something that was existing way before religion became a term or a word. Uh, and they started saying, have faith, and they made it synonymous with religion. But actually, faith is what makes everything what it is. It has nothing to do with religion. Faith has nothing to do with religion. It is your imagination on the unseen. It's what makes okay. this world what it is. So it's not a problem calling a religion. Absolutely, make it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But ultimately, faith is what your everything you see in this world was done by faith. It's so powerful that religion decided to use that word. And that's why when you hear faith now, you think religion. But faith was around, and that is what made everything possible, is faith in your unseen. You see what I'm saying with that? I do. There's a Bible verse, too. Uh, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence oh, yes. of things not seen. 100%. I love it. Mm. Yes. Yes. It's is so this funny. to think about when you just say it, and then sit there and actually think about what they're saying? You know what I mean? It's really, really deep. It's the evidence of things not seen. Yes. I and that's that. what it comes down to. So for people that like to be scientific, let's get scientific. You can and call biblical. it whatever you, in biblical, religion, whatever. It doesn't matter because it actually is all the same. It is all the same. Mm -hmm. It but really again, is. Some people mm -hmm. with different religions, what I do love about science when you get to this is like, you can have people from different religions all agree on science. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like it. And that's why I, I love, love it. it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and it's a give and take, and everyone learns. And oh my gracious, every time that it, I look at this, the timer, 13, it feels like we're just There's getting no. started. We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> it really does every time. Oh man, it's so, so cool. What would you offer for a homework assignment for giving up is not giving in? Take something that means a lot to you today, and first of all, write it down and pinpoint what your actual desire is. Think about something that really means a lot to you, whether it's a belief that you really hold on to that doesn't serve you anymore, or something that you really want to appear in your life at this time. Write it down, think about it for just in the morning time or just a few minutes throughout the day, and then let it go. 
Let it go. And if you do anything, make sure it's from the excitement of it already being done. Don't do it to get something. Imagine already done. Have fun with that. I love it. Have fun, guys. Mike gave some really key takeaways. We love spending time with you today. We look forward to connecting with you next Tuesday. Yes, tune in. Absolutely. See see you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, Mike, are you there? I think it's, yeah, can you still hear me by the oh, way? Oh, good, good, good. Yes, I, I was just closing down our thing. 14 minutes, 59 seconds. What? <laughs> I was like, okay. Close it down, close it down. <laughs> Ellie, how fun was that? Oh, that was so much fun. I really loved that one. That was good. That was good. Was anybody on there? I didn't see anybody live to test it. Um, no, that's fine. I love this. Who cares? I think it's it is. It is. Yeah, I like it because now I'm getting familiar with the screens and toggling back and forth. Mm-hmm. And so um, I said, oh, this is nice to type in when you're sharing stuff. I typed in Neville Goddard. And so key takeaways. And I said, like, oh, so it's helpful to still use wow. it. To interact with that thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Ellie. Ellie. How can you just? L, I could do this all the fucking time. I know yes. all the fucking time, and especially if people are talking and coming. Oh my god! But this L, is, is this a passion? Is this a true passion? Yes, I'm just soaking in the moment. Like I'm so happy. Love it. Absolutely love it. You know it's a passion when 15 minutes is coming up. And I'm like, <laughs> got to be kidding me. Hell, how fast will an hour go interacting with people? Yes. Oh, my God. It would fly by, dude. Fly by. And I love interaction with you and I going back, bouncing stuff off each other. I like not knowing what you're going to ask me to do. Like you say, what's a good homework assignment? I was like, oh, cool. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> what would I do to make it better? That was really that. good. That oh, was really you. good. Thank really you. good. I love it, L. I love that. That was so cool. What, what would you do? I was like, shit, I love not knowing what you're going to say. Or are you throwing something out? I was like, cool, let's go with this. What would I do? Well, I, and I liked it because when you had done it to me, it keeps, I, I loved it because it keeps me even more engaged. And I know in coaching, there's a level of you have to be able to really listen to what the person's saying. And so uh, I noticed I was listening to one of our feedbacks and I said, there's deeper listening that you can be doing with Mike because you were a little engaged with what to say next. But he shared some really key things to dig into. So release okay. a little more and just be there for anything and everything. Because the more you just are there, don't even prepare. He had said something nice. Just listen to him. I appreciate that, Ellie. I think, you know, it's so crazy. My whole life has been impromptu. Like, I never plan anything. Like, mm-hmm. it's so crazy. It may sound like I'm digressing, but that's one of the things I always felt bad about was Eric learned to ride a motorcycle because I wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. But when you ride a motorcycle, you have to think quick. Traffic changes quickly. It's not the same as a car. I remember Eric had Eric fell off the motorcycle and Willie Hummel came and got him. And I remember, I remember Eric saying, "Is so sorry for the bike. I said, Eric, I don't give a fuck about that bike. I said, fuck that bike. But Eric knew how much I love most. I didn't care. I'm so proud of it showed how much I don't give a shit about that bike. I was like, are you okay? Yeah. I said, don't worry about that stupid bike. Fuck that bike. I know. But one of the things I realized, and I didn't want him to do anymore, was I never wanted him to get a motorcycle after that. Because Eric thinks too much. I always thought that. I said, yeah, he thinks Eric so thinks too much. much. You can't, you can't think. 
in motorcycle riding is instinctive. You have to flow. There's no, oh, this the pattern. 